Hiya BookTube, Bill Rudenberg here at the Rudenberg Library coming to you with a bookshelf tour. I'm, uh, I'm going to finish off this first case in the upper room and uh, as I said in the previous video we can now get to the books on down the line. We've unburied the, uh, the storage room here and so I'm thoroughly enjoying looking through some of my books. Some of them I've I almost forgot that I had them because I haven't seen them for a while. But uh, anyway, I wanted to share these with you in this uh, bookshelf tour. So I hope you enjoy. So let's go ahead and get started. So my first book on the bottom shelf is The Civil War's First Blood, Missouri, 1854 to 1861 by James Denny and John Bradbury. And this is a book that uh, my mother knows that I like the Civil War and uh, she found this and bought this for me. Let's see, this is Missouri Life out of Boonville, Missouri, MissouriLife.com and it is a two, 2007 book and again it just goes through the you know the history of the Civil War uh, from 1854 to 1861 this this time period just prior to the Civil War and what happened in Missouri with the Civil War. Next book on the list, or on the shelf rather, is Volcanoes in Human History, The Far-Reaching Effects of Major Eruptions by, uh, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, so please forgive me, but Jelly, or Jell uh, Zilinga de Boer and Donald Theodore Sanders. Yeah, bottom name was a little easier to say, but uh, this was a good book. I read this one. It's been quite a while since I've read it. But it talks about major eruptions in world history and just what that did to the humans that were living there. Uh, it's very interesting. I talk about this in my sixth grade class when we're looking at the basics of, of um, uh, geography on planet Earth and, and just the, the moving of the Earth and the pl uh, plate tectonics and stuff like that. This is from Princeton University Press out of Princeton and Oxford. And it is a 2002 book. Um, I'd recommend that book. That's a good book. Very, I thought it was very interesting. Had a good chapter on Mount Vesuvius, which we talk about in class over in uh, Italy. All right. Here's an older book, uh, Across the Wide Missouri by Bernard DeVoto. Uh, this one comes from the American Heritage Library. This is a book that I had to uh, read in my uh, History of the West college class. He had us read three different um, trade books. This was one of them. And uh, some of these books he had us read, or most of them. This one's a Huffton Mifflin Company out of Boston, and it is 19, this particular version is 1975. Originally, looks like they did it in 1947, but um, this was always interesting because the three books that he had us get were all out of print and uh, at the time and um, so a lot of the students had troubles finding the books they even asked the teacher to to use a different book to teach out of and he totally said no we're going to use that book and uh, so it was quite interesting I was it was at that time that I discovered ABE books online and I started uh, I actually discovered the art of buying uh, used books online and totally changed the way I collected books. It was a wonderful experience. Uh, I did not spend nearly what everybody else spent. I think I spent, it was like 10 bucks for all three books and the rest of them were spending 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks for these books. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, here's a biography, or uh, excuse me, a, um, yeah, biography on Ru uh, Donald Rumsfeld here. Rumsfeld, uh, personal portrait by Midge uh, Dector. And I have not read this. It is, let's see, a Regan, Regan Books. And it is from 2003. Haven't, haven't read that, but Donald Rumsfeld, he was, of course, with the, with the, uh, the Bush administration, and uh, there's, I know a lot of opinions out there about him. I'm just going to not say a word. <laughs> I'm going to stay neutral. Um, here's a book, uh, Never Too Late, 
Prosecutor's Story of Justice in the Medgar Evers Case by Bobby uh, DeLafter. There's that book. And of course, uh, you know, civil rights issues, some of the, the uh, ugliness of the civil rights. Uh, just a, that was a rough time in our, in America's history. Just an, it was kind of an embarrassing, not kind of, it was an embarrassing time in our history. Some of the stuff that happened, but, uh, not the movement itself, but the reason they had to have a movement. Um, just anyway, uh, this is a, let's see, a Lisa Drew book, uh, from Scribner out of New York. And it is a 2001 book. Next book on the shelf on our tour here is The Hero, Charles A. Lindbergh and the American Dream. This is by Kenneth S. Davis. Um, and of course, you guys know Lindbergh did a lot of a lot of stuff for aviation. Pretty popular guy. This book is out of Garden City. In New York, Doubleday and Company, 1959. 1959. And so, nice hardback edition. All right, a book I got out of the, was this one out of the library? I think it was, out of the school library, I think. Anyway, The War Against the Jews, 1933 to 1945 by Lucy S. Do uh, Dodowitz. Hopefully I didn't butcher that uh, name too bad some of the some of the foreign names I really struggle with so this is let's see a Bantam book from Toronto and it is 19 looks like 86 is this edition 1986 and uh, looks like this is just a history of the Holocaust really so that'll be a good read. Excited about that. Uh, here is a, um, a biblical book, Isaiah, an Exposition, uh, by W.A. Criswell. And I can't remember where I got this one, to be honest. And on the book of Isaiah. This is from Zondervan Publishing House, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and it is from the year 1977. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's a good one uh, for all you Custer fans. My Life on the Plains by General George A. Custer. Of course, this was an autobiography of his. I think it was a pretty popular history and its time. It says, edited with an introduction by Milo Milton uh, Quaif, Quaif, uh University of Nebraska Press out of Lincoln, and it is a 19, let's see here, 1952 is what it looks like. And uh, I've actually got another copy of, of My Life on the Plains. I don't know where it's at. It's in here somewhere. But uh, anyway, that ought to be an interesting book because he was... Uh, he thought a lot of himself, Mr. Custer did, and so that'll be an interesting read. Uh, here's a guide to the study of American history. Yeah, this is kind of an older, older book. I think I got this at a uh, used book sale in the mall, and it was just an old textbook, and I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, it's from the St. Joe Public Library. It's kind of falling apart. I got to be careful with it. It's from 1896. Is by E. Channing and A. B. Hart, and so that uh, Gin and Company Publishers, uh, the Athenium Press, 1896, Boston, and out of London. So very interesting, an old old book. I got a habit of keeping and hanging on to those old textbooks. I think it's just neat to see the different perspectives from different time periods. Um, so here's a history of the Panama Canal. Um, the Panama Canal, an informal history of its concept, building, and present status by Donald Barr Chidsey. Nicely illustrated. Sorry about the glare. 
Again, the lighting up here is not very good. But uh, it's from our high school library when they decided to get rid of it. It's from Crown Publishers Incorporated out of New York, and it is a 1970 book. All right, about halfway done here. Hopefully you've stayed with me. So um, here is the memoirs of Chief Red Fox with photographs. Okay, so nice memoir. And it is, let's see, a Fawcett Crest book out of Greenwich, Connecticut, uh, an introduction with Cash Asher. And it is a 1971 book. 1971 book, not very long, 176 pages, so that'll be a pretty fast read, I think. Here's a World War II book, Anzio, Italy and the Battle for Rome, 1944, by Lloyd Clark. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I got it uh, from, looks like Borders. It says $16, but I know I didn't pay $16. I'm too cheap for that. Very rare do I buy books brand new. Uh, this is from Grove Press out of New York, and it is a 2006 book, and I'm sure I got it off the Markdown rack somewhere. Well, probably from Borders, but uh, at, at one point it was marked down. Here is My Life by Bill Clinton. This was, of course, his big old autobiography that he had uh, came out with after his presidency, and it's a it's a chunker. It's a good sized book. As a matter of fact, it is, let's see here. Yeah, I've got some Roman numerals here. Let me get past those to the regular pages. Yeah, it's 957 pages. It's a chunker. A doorstop of a book. And it is, let's see, Alfred A. Knopf, New York, and it's a 2004 book. And they actually came out with um, when they did the paperback version of this, it came out in two volumes, but the hardback was in one volume. And I did start this book. I don't know if my bookmark is still in it or not. I didn't get real far. Yep, I must have taken, oh, there it is. Yeah, I didn't get, I have 50 pages in. I didn't get very far. I'm going to have to come back to that and read that one of these times. That been a, that probably would have been a good one for uh, the March uh, Mammoths. Uh, here is Shocking Secrets of American History, 115 Surprising and Amusing Tales by Bill Cote. And I've read some of this. They're just a lot of little short stories. You know, you could read one if you, if you are like me and you fall asleep once you're in bed. You don't read real well at bed. Uh, this would be an ideal book because each of these stories is only like two pages. Maybe three at the most, but most of them are two pages. Um, it's a MJF book out of New York, and it is from 2006. And this is another one I got off the markdown rack. All right, let's see. I got uh, next on the list here is Old Times in the Colonies. And, of course, I don't have, I do not have a uh, dust jacket for this. But this is an old one from the public library. It's by Charles Carlton uh, Coffin. Let's see, New York and London, Harper and Brothers Publishers. And this is a, looks like 1908. So that's got some age to it, 1908. And uh, I've not read that one yet. Okay, so here we go with a uh, biography on John C. Calhoun. So, John C. Calhoun, An American Portrait, uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning biography by Margaret L. Coit. And there's that one. Of course, John C. Calhoun from South Carolina. He was one of the big guys calling for secession. Uh, right the, you know, well, it was around 18, 1849, 1850, right in there that he was calling for secession. Of the, uh, of the South from the Union. So this is a Huffton Mifflin Company out of Boston, and it is 1950. And this is supposed to be a good one. I have not got to it yet. 
I've I have in my collection started starting putting together. You know, I've got biographies on Webster, on Cal, uh, on Daniel Webster, uh, John C. Calhoun, and Henry Clay, and then I've got some uh, biographies that are that that cover all three of them, and uh, so I'm excited to get those going because that's one of my favorite time periods to read about. I just think it's fascinating, uh, just everything the United States, the growing pains that we went through as a nation. Um, so anyway, moving forward here, Indians of the Americas by John Collier says, from prehistory to the present, one of the world's foremost authorities on American Indians examines their long and tragic history in this abridged edition of his famous work. And I have not read this. Again, most of these books I haven't gotten to because they've been buried in the upper room here. But uh, this is, let's see, a mentor book from the New American Library out of New York. And it is from the year... Oh, where is it? 1947. 1947. Alright, here's a nice hardback edition. The Streak of Luck. The Life and Legend of Thomas Alva Edison by Robert... Uh, is it Conant? 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 Um, and it is... Let's see, a Sea View Books out of New York and... 1979. This is, like I said, a nice hardback edition. This is a pretty famous book, actually. Seen lots of copies of these around. Um, there was another one that just came out on on Thomas Edison that I I started reading right there in the store, right in Walmart, and I think I got the introduction and maybe the first chapter done while my wife was shopping, and I'm struggling to remember who it was that wrote it. Um, Pretty, pretty famous current author, but uh, it, it was a big old thick book, but man, it was good. I, I really wish I could have could have bought that. They just, they wanted a small fortune for it because it was, you know, a good sized book, but um, I know I'm going to get it when it comes out, uh, you know, when I can find it marked down. But anyway, here is Dawn Over Saratoga, The Turning Point of the Revolutionary War by Fred J. Cook. And of course, Saratoga, that's where um, Benedict Arnold found some fame. And of course, Horatio Gates took all the credit, which did not go over very well. This is a Doubleday and Company Incorporated, Garden City, New York, uh, and it is a 1973 book. And it's a pretty short volume. I, that'll be a pretty easy read, I'd think. I haven't, again, I haven't got to it. I like knowing I got stuff to read in the future. <laughs> um, this is General Eisenhower on the Military Churchill. No cover for this. Show you the binding there. Or the spine of it anyway. Let's see. This is from W.W. W. Norton and Company uh, out of New York, and it's a 1970 book edited by James Nelson and it's a conversation with uh, Alistair Cook and so a pretty small volume all right last two books on the shelf I hope you've stayed with me here now I'm very very excited because I I completely forgot I had this book I was going to read a book on Stonewall Jackson as one of my next reads at the end of April and it's up there on the on the next shelf up at the top but I completely forgot I had this one. This one's this is awesome. Burke Davis. I've read Burke Davis's work before, and and I enjoyed it. So this is they called him Stonewall, a life of Lieutenant General uh, T. J. Jackson, C. S. A. Now Stonewall Jackson, of course from Virginia, and uh, one of the best generals of the Civil War, in, in my opinion, anyway. Um, you know, if he wouldn't have died at. Uh, uh, Chancellorsville, Gettysburg could have ended up a whole different ball game. That's, I mean, again, just my opinion. I think he he is one of the only generals that could just absolutely strike fear into the hearts of the Union soldiers. They just heard his name and they they were shaking in their boots. And you know, you know let alone how how good he was on the field. Just his his reputation alone was outstanding. 
But anyway, uh, so I'm excited that I found this because uh, I'm, this is going to be my end of April. Not the one up there, but it's going to be this one instead. Uh, this is from Holt, Reinhardt, and Winston uh, out of New York. And it is a 19, looks like, 68 book. So anyway, it's kind of nice to find this, uh, you know, as we're doing the video here. Uh, I'm excited. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> um, anyway, last book here on this uh, bottom shelf, Encyclopedia of American History. This is an updated and revised by Richard, edited by Richard B. Morris and Henry, uh, Henry Steele Cominger. I got this one out of the school library. And it is a Harper and Row Publishers out of New York. And it is from the year 19, looks like 65. So anyway, that's the bottom shelf, first bookshelf in the upper room. I hope you've enjoyed this. Sounds like my kids just got home and my wife, so I better get this wrapped up. Hope you enjoyed this bookshelf tour. There's many more to come. I know I'm enjoying seeing you know, some of these books for the first time in a long time. It's changing my, my TBR list. So anyway, thank you for sticking with me. I know the video got a little bit long. I apologize for that, but uh, hope you enjoyed it. So have a good evening, BookTube.